excuse me, 2 Samuel, I'm sorry. I was way ahead of you. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, and I want you to find chapter number 5. 2 Samuel chapter number 5. We've already looked in 1 Samuel, and uh, we, we got into a little bit of 2 Samuel last week as we're, as we're studying the, uh, uh, the, our journeys for the faith or our journeys in faith. We are looking in this lesson, lesson number 11, the journey to Zion. The journey to Zion. Now, just by way of introduction, I want you to be reminded of our lesson overview. And uh, the lesson overview is, is as Christians, uh, it is a certainty. It is not, uh, it, the potential's not there. The question is not there. It is a certainty that we are going to face trials and temptations on our journey of faith. And as we'll see in this lesson, David faced an intense trial for an extended period when King Saul was hot on his path. King Saul was trying to kill him. And, and uh, his response to this trial is an example for you and I to follow. Later, when, when David became king, David, as you know, he faced a mighty temptation, and David chose to sin. And uh, throughout this lesson, we, we'll examine David's life, we're going to see the consequences of his sin, and then the steps he followed to restore fellowship with Almighty God. You know, we, <coughs> excuse me, we talk a lot, or we spend a lot of, of preaching and teaching and reading on the giant that David slew. And uh, we forget to focus sometimes on, or don't focus as much on, uh, the giant that slew David. And that's what we'll look at uh, this evening. We need to focus, our, our aim is to focus on God during times of trial and fleeing the devil during times of temptation. You see, when we fall during one of these times, listen, we can experience triumph when we confess our sin and turn from our sin and move toward God. So here are, here are our lesson goals. Here's how we need to make application. We need to make application, first of all, to seek the Lord in response to our trials. Number two, we need to find rest in God when we get discouraged and worry or discouraged and weary. And then we need to uh, flee when we're faced with temptation. Hey, the Bible's very clear on that. The Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But we're also to run from temptation. And then uh, we apply or hope to understand the consequences when we sin against God. And then we hope to learn, of course, to confess sin in order to experience victory through Jesus Christ. So here's what we saw last week. First of all, as we begin, we saw David's great trial. What was the great trial that we saw? The great trial was that Saul, King Saul, was trying to kill David. Uh, he became very jealous of him. That was the reason for the trial. David's, David's popularity got beside Saul. Remember, they were coming into town after a battle, and, and uh, the people, the women, the Bible says, of the town began to say, Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his ten thousands. And so they got very, uh, uh, Saul got very, very jealous over that. So David's popularity was one reason for the trial, but also Saul's problem, which was fear and jealousy. And then we saw David's response to the, to the trial. He fled. David fled. He went and hid out. And, and then we see his rest in the trial. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6, great phrase in that verse. It says while da when David fled and he was kind of hiding out, that he encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Man, that, that ought to be a challenge for all of us. When we, get, when we get weary, when we get fearful, we need to get alone in the Word of God and encourage ourselves in the Lord. So uh, that was his rest in the trial. Now let's pick up and let's move on from uh, David's great trial. Let's look tonight very quickly at David's great temptation. David's great temptation. After ki the king, after King Saul's killed in battle, David, who had become a national hero in Israel, I mean, he was. Uh, 
He was a hero to everyone in Israel. David began to reign as king over all of Israel. David, at this point, he's still a man after God's own heart. He desired more than anything else to serve and honor God. Great statement right here. Listen to this. David's greatest ambition was not to be king. David's greatest ambition was to be greatly used by God. That's how David started out. Man, that is a great lesson for us. That is a great lesson for us. May, may our ambition not be temporary earthly things. May our amb ambition ultimately be to honor and to be greatly used of God. Now, look in verse 3 of 2 Samuel 5. The Bible says, So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. Now, when David becomes king, Israel, they still have many enemies to, to defeat. They, they've still got a lot of battles to fight. And so David led the people as he followed God, and God gave victory after victory. But listen very carefully. It was, in, it was during this time of victory when David faced a great temptation to do evil. Listen, one of the greatest times of temptation will come to you after a great spiritual victory. One of the greatest times of temptation. You, after the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized, his earthly ministry uh, was uh, about to begin. It was about to, uh, 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 it had been set. You know what the Bible says? A spirit took him off into the wilderness 40 days. He fasted. And the Bible says it was there in that time of fasting after that great spiritual high being baptized. He's there in the wilderness and the devil comes to him and tempts him. Listen to me. Some of the greatest temptations you'll ever face very well may be sitting in a church. Huh? Could be after you leave an awesome service. Could be after a great spiritual victory in your life. The devil will come knocking on your door. Now, notice in chapter 11. Flip over to chapter 11 of 2 Samuel. Chapter number 11 of 2 Samuel. Here's where it begins. And it came to pass after the year was expired. Listen to this. At the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed, walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and, lay, and he lay with her. She was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. So here's what we notice first. Notice David laughs. David has a great laugh. It, this was the time. It was the set time. It was a set time every year when kings and nations would go to war. Yet the Bible says David tarried still at Jerusalem. Listen, when we are out of the way of our duty, we are in the way of temptation. When we are out of the way of our duty, we are in the way of temptation. So David has this, this great moral lapse, a lapse in judgment. Man, when he should have been off doing his duty... He stayed behind. He had idle time. The devil began to work. David's lapse. And then I noticed David's lust. Here's, here's a quote that I want you to listen to by Matthew Henry. It's this. Idleness gives great advantage to the tempter. Standing water gathers filth. The bed of sloth often proves the bed of lust. Matthew Henry. Now, now notice, when we're talking about David's lust, notice the next stages of this event in his life. It, it goes from 
from verse 2 to verse 5 in chapter 11. First of all, we see it, his look. Here's where the lust starts, his look. David saw a woman taking a bath. She's out there bathing. And so the sin in David's life, first of all, came into him through his eyes. Our children are right. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. He was tempted, as was Eve in Genesis. He was tempted by what he saw. We could preach an entire sermon on the lust of the eyes if we wanted to tonight. And, and it, it, it's easy for all of us. I, told, I did a marriage retreat this past weekend for Liberty First Baptist Church, and, and I told them uh, there, were, there were five things that were really, really hurting marriages today. And uh, name five, and I said, I'm going to add two more. And one of the ones that I added for him, I said, I made all the men look at me, and I said, men, you look at me, pornography. It will kill your marriage. Men, listen to me. Pornography, it will kill your marriage. You say, preacher, I, I'm, I'm 80 years old. I don't, hey, it doesn't matter how old you are. The devil will wait long enough. The devil will wait long enough to get you. So it, 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 sin entered through his eye. But, but second of all, uh, not only his look, but his lust. Look at verse 3 and 4. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. She came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. Listen to this quote. Christians often want to retreat from the spiritual battle and the war that rages forgetting they will always find us. It is better to be weary in the battle than to become apathetic, lazy, and caught off guard. Listen, listen to that statement again. It's better to be weary in the battle than to become apathetic, lazy, and caught off guard. That is so true. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So we see his look, we see his lust, we see his pride. Through pride and deceit, David attempts to hide his sin. Sending a message, David commanded that Uriah be placed in the front of the battle line where he was sure to be killed. Now, remember, Uriah is Bathsheba's husband. He's a soldier. And, and by the way, he's faithful in his duty. He, he's being a better man than, Dave, than the king is right now. You read the whole story, and you read this, this entire story, and you'll see just how good of a man Uriah was. I encourage you to go home and read the entire story and, and see all that Uriah did because he wanted to honor the king. Verse 15 through 17, the Bible says, And David wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle. And retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass, when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew, listen to this, where he knew that valiant men were. <laughs> the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Man, there's, a, there's another whole sermon in that. When David received the message that Uriah was indeed dead, he married Bathsheba. But the man who was once known as a man after God's own heart was now a man who grieved God's heart. You see how that sin took him? It, it started when he wasn't where he should have been. He wasn't where he should have been. He was in the wrong place at the right time, you could say. Or you could use it, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So, so it began... Where he, when he, he wasn't where he should have been. Number two, he was looking at something he shouldn't have been looking at. He had every opportunity to turn around and go back down and get in bed. All right? And then he began to lie. He, he, he stole, and then he lied, and then he committed murder. You see how, see how what sin does? Man, sin, sin goes down, down, down. You say, preacher, I can't believe, David, there is not one thing. You've heard me say this for 19 years. There's not one thing that any of us would do in a matter of in, in a matter of seconds if we're not walking under the obedience of Almighty God. Not one thing we wouldn't do. The Bible says in verse 26 and 27 of 2 Samuel 11, and when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. 
when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house. She became his wife and bare him a son. This is a Christian man. This is a Christian man. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Boy, it never gets past God. Gary Richmond, listen to this illustration. Uh, Gary Richmond, a former zookeeper, said this. He said, raccoons go through a glandular change at about 24 months, two years old. After that, they often attack their owners if, if somebody has them as a pet. Now, since a 30-pound raccoon can be equal to a 100-pound dog in a scrap, I felt compelled to mention the change coming to a pet raccoon owned by a young friend of mine by the name of Julie. She listened to polite, politely as I explained the coming danger. And he said, I'll never forget her answer. It'll be different for me. And she smiled and she added, Bandit wouldn't hurt me. He just would not hurt me. Well, three months later, Julie underwent plastic surgery for facial lacerations sustained when her adult raccoon attacked her for no apparent reason. Then he was let out into the wild. Listen, sin, sin can come dressed in an adorable disguise. I mean, sin can be very, very, as we play with it, how easy it is to say, well, it'll be different for me. I can get close to it. I can play with sin. Listen, the results are predictable. The results are predictable. If we play with fire, sooner or later we're going to get burned. And then I notice not only David's lapse, not only his lust, but notice his losses. Now listen to this. Here, here's where the rubber meets the road. David suffered great and personal loss because of his sin. The greatest loss was that of his fellowship with the Lord. In 2 Samuel 11, verses 26 and 27, the last part of verse 27, that, that says it all right there. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. But listen, David also suffered severe consequences in his family life. This sin followed David until his death. His household was a mess. I thought David was forgiven. He was forgiven. Certainly he was forgiven, but that does not change the consequences of our sin. You see, we have, God gives us the free will to make our own choices. We just don't get to choose the results or the consequences of our sin. And listen to me, I, I can run out and I can do whatever I want to and uh, uh, live uh, for the devil and, and uh, live an immoral, wicked lifestyle, come to faith in Christ, be forgiven of my sin, but ten years down the road find out that I have contracted some kind of terrible disease due to my immoral lifestyle, and I can go to an early grave because of that. Was I forgiven? Yes! Sin has consequences. David's sin followed his consequences following his sin. He's had severe consequences in his family life. Notice, notice the tragic events that came as a of David's sin. First of all, the baby that Bathsheba conceived died. Amnon, David's son, raped his half-sister Tamar. Amnon was killed by Absalom, Tamar's brother. Absalom is killed by Joab. Amasa, who was David's nephew, was killed by Joab as well. So the consequences of his sin with Bathsheba caused heartache through his out his entire life. Now, look in chapter 12 of 2 Samuel. Chapter 12, verse number 14. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion. Listen to this. This is talking about David and his sin. And because David was a man of God. Listen to this verse. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blast the child also that is born of the deed shall surely die. David will make a statement. I believe it's in Psalm 51 where he asks for forgiveness and he says something like this, Lord, against thee and thee alone have I sinned. You say, preacher, how in the world could he say that? He, he sinned against Uriah. He, he sinned against Bathsheba. He, he stole. Listen, sin ultimately is against God. 
against God in our nation. And it allows, when, when we are trying to live a life of holiness and purity, living for the Lord, and people know that, we, when we have a lapse in judgment, we make a grave mistake like David did, and we let sin go down, down, down in our lives, we give, we give great opportunity for the enemy of God to blaspheme his name and to mock him because of our sin. Along our journeys of faith, we'll have trials and temptations. Both are inevitable. To continue advancing on our journeys of faith, we've got to respond by fleeing temptation and trusting God during times of trial. Our Father, we love you tonight. Lord, thank you for your word. It is a very sobering word tonight. It's a very challenging word, and it chills us. Lord, I pray, first and foremost, we would be men and women who are determined. What we want our life to be about is your honor. We want to glorify you. That's why you created us, to worship you and to glorify you. That is the chief end of man. Lord Jesus, I pray that we would do that. Lord, I pray that that desire in our hearts, Lord, would dictate every single decision we make in this life. Lord, when we see the temptation coming, Lord Jesus, may we have the spiritual wherewithal to flee. Lord, when we see the trial hit our life, Lord, may we be sound enough in our faith to know that we need to run to you and trust you and hide in you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, three people you're going to challenge to be here with you Sunday now. Don't forget to do that. Reach out to at least three people. 845 early service, Sunday school at 10, worship at 11, and then 6 p.m. Sunday night. Can't wait to see you. God bless you.